Hello everyone and welcome to another unboxing video. It's another Hoover for you today and this is the Hoover Eco G bagged cylinder vacuum cleaner. Now I don't believe this is a current model anymore. I've had this a while. Um, I just bought it because I wanted it to go with my Eco G globe upright. Unfortunately I didn't buy the Eco G bagless cylinder that also forms part of this range but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get hold of one of those at some point. But for today we've got this bagged version. This is in fact basically a Hoover Telios just branded Eco G because it has a, a lower wattage motor than the standard Telios had at the time but of course since the new regulations came into place the current Telios models have a lower wattage motor than even this I believe. But anyway let's have a look at the model number etc. It's model number TTG1100. It has a PETS mini turbo nozzle, integrated accessories, 360 hose neck rotation, HEPA washable filter, metal plate carpet and floor nozzle, telescopic tube, and variable power control, bag check indicator, and a 9.1 maximum reach with accessories made in PRC and the colour inside this pack is opal white slash Caribbean green. So in fact, no, I tell a lie, I've got two other EcoG models of course, the EcoG Globe and the EcoG Turbo Power, which I forgot about the Turbo Power model until I read the colours because they're all in this opal white Caribbean green colour. So here it is, 50% energy saving Hoover are claiming against what? I don't know. It's against, uh, it's against the comparison to the Telios TTE2203 model. Well without any further ado let's get it open. It says on the top, powerful bagged cleaning, half the energy. All tools on board, variable power, washable HEPA, high reach cleaning. So this is a sort of standard box we've come to expect from Hoover of late. Sort of a red, red and black box. And we've got some details here, phone number you can ring in case you have any problems. And Hoover saying contact us before contacting your retailer. They don't want, they don't want any potential trouble with the retailers, so if you have any trouble with your Hoover, they want you to phone them. Don't go telling tales. That's basically what that's saying. Okay, let's see what we've got. Well, here first of all, is the bog standard carpet and hard floor nozzle. Nothing new to see here folks, is there? But at least, at least it's got the metal sole plate, which is nice to see. Much better than a plastic sole plate in my version. The metal sole plates do tend to glide over the floor a bit easier. So there's not a lot to say about that nozzle. The standard thread pickers either side of the suction inlet. You've got side suction channels either side. You've got the foot operated pedal that lowers. At the front it lowers the brush and at the back there is a little squeegee. That comes down quite far actually, much further than some of the other machines I've got. It's hard to pick up on the camera but it does actually come, come up quite a lot there. You've got two wheels at the back and obviously that's where the tube goes in and you've got a parking bracket as well for parking it on the machine and I believe if this machine does have a, a storage bracket at the back you use it in the storage bracket as well. Next we have quite a hefty telescopic extension tube. Quite sturdy. That's quite a good length. I've recently opened a Hoover, very basic Hoover model, a Hoover Spritz, which had a telescopic extension tube, but 
it's very short. In fact, I'll do a d direct comparison possibly, but it's certainly, even, I can tell that this is a lot longer. I find with the spritz, I'm having to stoop down, but this one does seem to have quite a nice length on it, so there should be no stooping or bending with this model. So there's that. What else? Here's the Pets Turbo Nozzle, finished in that Caribbean green colour. Again, it's pretty standard, fitted to many Hoover cleaners. It is different to the one you find on the Globe. It's also different actually to the one on the um, Turbo Power uprights. Basically, it's fitted to a lot of Hoover cylinder vacuums. So again, it's a pretty standard affair with your rotating brush. The little clip here that enables you to open it up so you get some access into the works in case you need to unclog it. If any hairs get wrapped around the brushes, you need to unclear any gunk from the turbine there. So there we go the pet hair remover. What else? The hose next I think. Feels fairly short. I don't know why they need to um, put the hose in a bag but anyway. Oh it's a long one. Actually it's not a long one. Here's the hose with the uh, hand grip there, standard suction inlet to reduce the suction briefly by introducing air into the hose. It swivels at this end and I do believe yes, it does swivel at the other end as well which should give you kink free cleaning. We don't want any kinkiness when you're vacuuming. So having a hose that swivels at the machine end and the handle end means that you shouldn't be getting all kinked up. Now that's just the instructions, won't bother with those today. Bit of cardy board and oh, it was quite dull when I started recording this. Again this is typical for where I live. One minute it's bright and sunny, the next minute it's dark. Dark as a baboon's bottom. There it is. So, out it comes. Nothing else. Again, nice to see Hoover only use, certainly in this model anyway, only use cardboard for their packaging. No polystyrene, so it's, it is a bit more eco-friendly than polystyrene packaging. Take that little protection out. So here we go. It's a nice little vacuum, I think. It's a quite attractive machine. And it does seem, I've unboxed a Telios on this channel, an earlier Telios, a UK made Telios Pets, a black model. So although this is called EcoG, it is basically a Telios. So if you're looking to buy this sort of cleaner, look for a Hoover Telios now because this is what. Hoover produced. All in all I quite like the looks of this vacuum and it does feel quite robust. As I say I'm thinking about the Telios from the early days and despite the fact that this is Chinese it does seem quite quite, quite strong little machine. But at least Hoover do offer bagged vacuums in their range. They offer some bagged uprights and bagged cylinder models for people who want the choice. Vax at the time of making this video do not offer, certainly not in the domestic range, they do not offer a bagged option in either upright or cylinder. I know in other countries like Hoover in the UK, um, as opposed to Hoover in the USA, which are different companies, but Hoover in the USA, they are actually owned by the company that owns Vax in the UK. They do offer as well a choice of bagged or bagless, so... But it's what sells, I suppose, but some people must still be buying bagged cleaners because they wouldn't keep producing them if they weren't selling in significant numbers. Right, so here it is. It's quite nice. Quite a nice looking 
little vacuum that. But it has all the features you'd expect of a modern cylinder vacuum cleaner. The layout, I've seen it hundreds of times, this layout. The design is different, but as far as how the machine's set out with the exhaust vent here, the pedals, the on-off and cord rewind, the electronic control, bag check indicator, all much of a muchness on a lot of machines today. So at least we do have the exhaust vent on the top of the machine as opposed to the back of the machine here, which does mean when you're cleaning stairs and you've got the machine balanced, because it should fit on a standard stair, at least the exhaust air is venting out this way and it's not being restricted. Like with some machines, if you have the vent on the bottom, it's restricted, it could overheat if you keep it in that position for too long, but at least on this one, it comes out the top and it's a washable HEPA filter. The advantage again of it coming, the exhaust air blowing upwards, it shouldn't disturb any dirt that's on the floor when you're cleaning. Some vacuum cleaners can be blowing the dirt away from you and you, it's like a cat and mouse game trying to catch it before the exhaust air blows, blows it away. That's very prevalent on say the Hoover Constellation and the later Maytag satellites and the later Hoover Constellations that exhaust from the bottom, especially on a hard floor. You're always, you're always running to get the dirt before it, it's blown away from you. But anyway, so it comes up from the top. So underneath here, there we go, is the washable HEPA. So again, nothing exciting here. Just a standard pleated HEPA filter. Reasonable seals all the way, all the way round. A black seal here, and it's all sealed into the plastic cage. And underneath, we've got a foamy block, quite a thick foamy block. I'll give that a sniff. I'm not sure if that's carbon activated, but it's quite a, quite a decent thickness that. That'll also help muffle the noise level as well as providing an extra layer of filtration. And under that, we have nothing but a plastic cover over the motor. So little fingers, if they're inquisitive, can't get their hands in, even if it's plugged in. You shouldn't be able to touch anything that would be live. So let's pop that back in. Pop the HEPA, so that's washable, according to Hoover. Make sure it's dry before replacing in the vacuum. But with a bagged vacuum cleaner, you do find, because the bag acts as the main filter, the exhaust filters tend to stay cleaner than a lot of bagless cleaners, especially at the cheaper end of the bagless range. So, here we have where the cord comes out. And it'll probably have a, a little sticker on it. Yes, there's a yellow sticker saying, well, don't pull it out too much more than that, but then there'll be a, a red one so never pull it beyond the red little bit of tape there. I always like to rewind it slightly back in when I see the red tape. And of course you've got your standard three pin plug fitted to the machine. Let's see how the flexi one works. It might be a bit sluggish because I've only just uncoiled it, but that's pretty good. Obviously, if I'd been using the machine, the cord would have been out and not curled up, so it would have gone in smoother than that. There's a little Let Us Help sticker on the back. I always try to, I normally move those, I think they're ugly. I'd normally put that somewhere inside the machine in the bag compartment. But, Let Us Help, don't take me back to the shop. Call this number or visit Uber's website. Here's the parking bracket at the back. So I can just pop on. Oh, is that, oh, there's a little, little protective doobie on that. So I can just pop on carpet floor nozzle. That clips into there to pause the machine. Obviously the hose will be attached as well. And yes, there is one on the back too. So again, you can have it stored in your cupboard like that. It also helps when you're carrying the machine upstairs. So again, pretty standard, nothing, to, nothing exciting to see. 
360 degree swivel caster with a little wheel. Um, two wheels of course and they do have quite a, a nice rubbery tyre on them so that's it's good for not necessarily on carpets but when you're cleaning hard floors, laminate floors. Helps provide a bit of grip for one and it also just helps protect the floor from being marked by the wheels. On here we have the model number, serial number 39001095. It's 1100 watts this, Hoover Limited, Merthyr, UK, made in PRC, type VS18. What did I tell you about the weather? The sun's gone in and it's raining now. <laughs> so, I haven't shown you inside yet. I'll, I'll just go through the symbols here. Where well, it says pool, which is just referring to that. Tools on board, variable power, full bag indicator, and quiet technology. Well, I never take Hoover's word for quiet. Ever since I was badly let down by the Alpina, the power of silence, it wasn't silent, was it? Piston, bag full indicator here. And of course, you've got your standard, it's a little bit stiff, your standard suction control for minimum to maximum. On off, cord rewind. And a little catch here that says open to access the bag compartment. But before we look at the bag, we'll look at the, the tools. Possibly better if I turn it round the other way. This is very light. So, oh, there we go. You see now, that's, that's better. And if I put it in front of my belly, I'll look there. Oh, no, that looks a bit rude. <laughs> there, I'm just doing it to hold. There we are. There. Can you see? Now, this is awkward because I can't see what I'm doing without looking at the um, monitor. And the monitor's back to front, so I'll feel my way around. This is your furniture nozzle, your all-purpose nozzle. A little bit of a different design. A little bit narrower than I expect. And it seems okay. Two litter pickers. It's got two at the back. Those two slits provide some suction relief so the nozzle doesn't stick to the surface. It still enables it to move along and allowing the air to flow. So that's that. I'll leave them to one side for now. So I thought, ooh, here is a dusting brush. Mm hmm. Now, not as good as the dusting brush I found on the Hoover A2 Idle Cleaner. Idol, Idol. Longish bristles, but not soft. So that's one that you could use on shelving and your tops of helmets and things, but I wouldn't use that on anything too delicate. It's a little bit, little bit stiff. And finally, a very, very short Stubbly little crevice tool. There we go. Mm. So there's the three onboard tools. It is nice to have them inside the machine. I'm not a fan of those clips that store the tools on the hose or on the handle. It makes the machine ugly in my view. And um, I just prefer them inside. Let's just pop everything back. I hope I don't get any complaints about not showing my face again. But like I did tell the person that complained, an unboxing video is about the product I'm unboxing. It's not about me. It's not all me, me, me. So, what else? Oh, the bag, the bag. I'm showing you the bag, have I? Plus the fact I don't have to put my contact lenses in, you see. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Does it? Oh, oh, it does. That's good. I was, I was thinking. Oh, it doesn't hold open, but you do have to sort of move it past like that. Here's the bag. Being a bit careful with it because I don't want the um, the seal to close. Obviously, it's self seal bag. Put that to one side. And behind the bag is another little filter. You'll be able to rinse that in water, dry it. That's a pre-motor filter. So of course the bag, and it's a, I think they're a HEPA bag, pure filt, they take pure filt bags. 
Obviously the bag is the main filter. This is your motor protection, so anything that might get past the bag, should this filter should stop it getting anywhere near the motor, which is located in here, just behind that grill there. I think that's probably the way to do it when you're emptying and changing the bag actually is to have the machine in that position. Slot this in, let me just see, if, oh it says up, so there is a way this goes in so it's with the words up at the top and obviously the bag slots onto here, let's just, can't do it back to front, do it from the side, quite a small bag. This is H30 Super. I think it could be the same bag that the um, Free Motion uses, I'm not sure. So that closes down. And I can see from the underside of the bag compartment that this rather nice Caribbean green finish is sprayed on, so it's only on the top. So it quite, seems quite nippy. Um, let me just check the grill. Yes, as you can see from the grill there, it's just a sprayed on finish, which, unless you're careful, will scratch off. Go on. Hang on. You don't want to go in, do you? Bit camera shy, I think, aren't you? Why is it not going in? I got it off. Oh, there we are. So let's uh, pop the hose on. Nice, nice click. And yes, indeed, it does swivel. Not only does, if I hold the collar, not only does the hose still swivel, but that swivels as well. So it should, hopefully, as I said, prevent it being tangled up. There's nothing worse than some, some vacuums only have a swivel at one end, either the hose end or the cleaner end. But the worst ones are the ones that don't swivel at all and they do, they do get a bit tangled up and you're having to untangle them. Alright, let's plug this bad boy in. If I can lean over. Hopefully it won't turn on, I'm not sure if it will. If it does, it's, oh, it's on minimum. Good, it's not gonna turn on. You're not turned on, are you? No, you're not. You soon will be though. I'm gonna turn you on by pressing this button here. Now for an 1100 watt motor, I think make the standard at the moment seems to be about 7 to 900 watts now since the new EU regulation. So this is a, you know, an 1100, but that's still quite economical. Even now an 1100 watt motor can be sold in Europe, it is still below the threshold of 1300 watts but of course in 2017 it will go down to 900 watt maximum a lot of machines as I say are under 900 watts now anyway but not too noisy I mean yes when it went on maximum the pitch did go a little high but just slightly even slightly below maximum it was quite good didn't seem to have any sort of soft start. I'll just put it right on maximum, just see if it starts off on maximum. Probably won't have a soft start motor, this. You naughty things, proved me wrong. Did you hear it did slightly ramp up? But only a slight, just listen again. So it did, it did ramp up slightly. I've always, I don't know why, but I always, when I've had cleaners with electronic control. I've always liked to start off on minimum anyway. I always start the machine minimum and then 
move up the power. So here's the bag full indicator, as I said, is a piston type affair. So as I block the end off, that will change. And if we can see it, but I can also hear the suction relief valve coming into effect when I'm blocking the end off. I'm not sure where it lets the um, air in actually. There is somewhere where it lets the air in. So obviously if you block the machine or you use the machine with a blockage or the a full bag, airflow will be restricted. And there's a little valve inside that knows, knows that the air is being restricted. It opens to allow air through to the motor to keep it cool. But you will know when that's happened, the motor changes tone. Another little thing, it's only a little detail, but I, I think it's a good little detail. If you see where the flex goes in and out of the machine, a little metal bar has been placed here. Because after a while, you're constantly pulling out the flex, aren't you? So you've used the machine, you rewind the flex, and then when you start the machine again, you normally stood up and you're pulling the flex out in order to plug it in. So you're pulling it out at this angle and obviously the flex is rubbing, in this case, it's rubbing up against this metal bar. If this metal bar wasn't here, as is the case on many vacuums I've owned or used, um, if I bought them second hand especially, it didn't happen on the machines I had because I was careful not to do it, but you could often get uh, the plastic little lines gorged out of it where you're constantly pulling that out but that will prevent that happening. So that is good. Let's have a look at the turbo nozzle. I think it's a good little cleaner, this. It does seem very easy to pull along. I will be doing a, a full review of this model, despite the fact it isn't a current model, but like I say, it's basically a Telios. It might have a bit more suction than the um, later Telios models, but I can't see it being a huge difference. Let's pop on. Again, the sun's gone back out and it's raining again. So here's the, just a small one supplied. You can buy a full size one. And if you've got pets, I would recommend it because that's too small to use on your carpets. So let's start it off. or will start it off a minimum and... Obviously, unfortunately, that does increase the noise level. They're not, uh, they're not the quietest of things, the air-powered turbo heads, but they do increase the effectiveness for pet hair removal. There goes the tube. So now, let's have a little push on the carpet. You could see it, but I could see it from where I'm, I'm knelt. You could see the carpet being lifted up. And the nozzle was easy to push, but it didn't feel too easy. Sometimes you can think, oh, this is easy to push, but you don't want that. You want the nozzle to feel like it is, so not gripping the carpet, but you need to feel that there's something going on underneath. And I did feel that. I felt that although I could push it easily, it wasn't... I felt it was being effective. It wasn't like too powerful with some nozzles. But one example was the um, Hoover Greenway cylinder. When that was on full power, obviously it's meant to be used at lower power levels anyway, but when it was on full power, it was such hard work to push that nozzle. I quite, you know, it's a basic nozzle, but I quite like it. I think this is gonna perform better than the um, Bagless Idle cleaner. And this would actually cope if you 
see the video for the idle, the demonstration video, I put a lot of dirt down. The cyclonic system could not cope with that muck at all. A lot of it bypassed, well not a lot of it. To be fair, a lot of it was captured in the bin, but quite a considerable amount bypassed the cyclones, went straight to the pre-motor filter and clogged it very, very quickly. So um, this would not happen. It would probably fill the bag to, to, to capacity, but it would just require a replacement bag. I wouldn't have to, and I've got the idle now. It needs a complete strip down and clean. It's absolutely filthy after that demo. I do like this little vacuum. The Telios name, Hoover do, although this isn't called Telios, but obviously it's a Telios, Hoover do like to recycle the names of their vacuums sometimes. We've had turbo power recycled, haven't we? And this is Telios. There's been others, I'm sure. I do like it. The hose, yes, it's not, it's, I'd say it's one and a half meters in length, the hose. I would prefer 1.8, would be, is a nice length. Let's just move that out of the way. All in all, it is nippy. It's a nippy little vacuum. I do think that's quite smart. What do you think? I think that is. It's a smart little vacuum cleaner. And the quality isn't bad. You know, it's Chinese, but I have... I have encountered worse quality vacuums than this machine. There's the parking bracket there. Let's unplug. And we will rewind. I'll just have to move that out of the way though. Let's get the flex sort of flat straightened out a bit. There we go. So I'll press on. There we go, that's the way. Oh dear. Got a bit tangled, but never mind. It's quite strong. And just help it along into the bottom of the cleaner there. I do like this. Makes me want to get one of the new Telios, the, the ones made since the EU laws. I think they do a white one, there's a red one, I'm not sure, I'll have to have a look. But while Hoover's still making, you know, bagged cleaners, kudos to Hoover for doing that, still offering their customers the option of bagged vacuum. I quite, I quite like this. I've not done a, a thorough test, but you know, my instincts tell me that this is not a bad little vacuum cleaner. I think it's going to do quite well. So there we go. That's the Hoover Eco G bagged cylinder vacuum cleaner. Don't forget, stay tuned. A lot of more, lot more reviews, unboxings, and other videos to come on my channel. Please subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video, which at the moment is a Monday, Wednesday and a Friday. Friday, at the moment, you will always see new and unique content from moi on a Friday. Mondays and a Wednesdays tends to be other things that I've found that you may be interested in. But sometimes on a Monday and Wednesday I might surprise you with something that I've done. I'm also on Twitter, so you can follow me on Twitter if you like. I do post a few exclusive pictures on Twitter about uh, the various vacuums I'm testing or going to test. There's also other things on Twitter as well that uh, you may or may not find interesting. But that's it for me and the Hoover EcoG bagged vacuum cleaner. It's goodbye and don't forget, wait for the review. It will be coming in a few weeks. Until then, I'll see you then.